What if the term religious art was an oxymoron, because all art is religious and religion and modern art never divorced? Contemporary art is just religion and drag. Likewise, the Met's Heavenly Bodies show of Catholic fashion was the museum's most popular exhibition in history. Artists have become our priests and prophets, museums are churches, collectors are church patrons, curators are apostles, and professors are evangelists. Critics are the theologians admired and useless. I am hardly the first person to observe this. In 1820, the artist and poet William Blake earnestly equated the sacrifice of an artist with that of a true believer. Quote, a poet, a painter, a musician, an architect. The man or woman who is not one of these is not a Christian. You must leave father and mother and house and lands if they stand in the way of art. It would surprise Mr. Blake that 200 years later, one could not be both an artist and a Christian, like him, because religion, especially Christianity, is the current art world's last, maybe the only, taboo. Ask yourself, how many Christian artists do you know? Artists as in showing their work in New York or Los Angeles galleries, yet out of the closet, dropping references to church, the Bible, Jesus, God's grace, or whatever, in casual conversation. More than not nary a one would be probable in a country that's 70% Christian. And yet, there you are, scratching your head, flummoxed. The shifts in art market racial demographics are introducing a diversity of beliefs, although not with intention. As white males are thrown out of the art world, so too is the baby bathwater of secularism. The pragmatic atheism that exalted art as religion is now vulnerable without their authority. As more attention is paid to black artists, so too does religion come along. Witness the words of Brooklyn artist Genesis Tremaine. In a recent Artnet podcast, host Katie White asked Tremaine if she was, quote, breaking, breaking the, the mold. mold in being openly Christian with no hesitation. Oh, sister, I really don't know how to be quiet about this. I can't help it. God's really good. I don't know what else to say. Is I feel like anything else would be dishonest, you know? I do live a prayer life, you know, as best I can. We live in a world where I get to be completely honest about my relationship with God. But is she breaking the mold? Not exactly. 73% of black people pray at least once a day. 87% of black women say they turn to their faith in difficult times. Tremaine's views are only novel in our stridently secular art world. Otherwise, her faith in God is as ordinary as Harlem on a Sunday. But such faith is not limited to African-American blacks. In fact, African artists celebrated in America often come from heavily Christian countries. Amaku Bofo, whose art was just shot into space, not a joke, <laughs> is from Ghana, where Reuters says, quote, the heart of global Christianity is. In Nigeria, Toyan Oji Odutola's home country, there are 70 million Christians. Julie Meritu is from Ethiopia, the second region in the world to make Christianity a state religion in 330 AD, right after Armenia, and well over a thousand years before, quote, white people were born. The artist Portia Svavahera came to prominence prior to Ms. Tremaine representing Zimbabwe in the 2013 Venice Biennale, a country that is 84% Christian. She's a believer too, and transparent in her personal accounts of the way her art emerges from her spiritual life. Zavahera quotes Psalm 3.5. I took my rest in sleep, and then I woke, for you sustained me. She paints from her dreams, which are sometimes nightmares. When she wakes, she prays, seeking comfort and meaning a process of healing and understanding. She draws at night to capture these events, or in the morning, sometimes taking notes to retain the experience. She asks herself and others, where do we go when we are dreaming? Conversations with her daughter, mother, and grandmother, all dreamers and women of faith, help clarify the import of these visions, moods, and energies. Dreams reveal the future or bring resolutions to Zavahera's problems. Yet she dreams in black and white. The colors she chooses in her paintings come from the waking life, what's around her, or what she is wearing. Zavahera's current show at David's Werner on 19th Street has, for me, been several years in the making. After seeing the artist's work at Freeze Art Fair in 2015, shown by Stevenson Gallery in Cape Town, it was obvious to me that her work was significant. 
In my review, I called hers the most accomplished paintings at the fair. They seem bound to make their way into the American market, especially New York's, but I'd have to be patient. Zavahera's work is simultaneously religious, sensual, and subversive, all three in the best sense of their meanings. Religious in the sense that the work is obviously in service of a higher order than itself. It is reaching. The range of emotions and expressiveness are too expansive to be the gestures of a self-conscious professional tooling around with aesthetics. Sensual in that the work almost always depicts a kind of bodily embrace, contact, or relation. Subversive in that such untethered religious embodiment is unironic, wild, and raw. It is unfamiliar, and like all art that hits with a shock, suspicious and almost ugly. Over a hundred years ago, the European avant-garde offended swaths of American artists and critics. Picasso and Matisse foisted upon them female nudes offensively distorted and jagged, and in impossible colors. Contemporary figuration, or especially black figuration, is in reverse, inclined toward pre-modern academicism for its legibility, warmth, and sense of honor. This is what the European modernists found African art able to destroy. Sava Hera was 17 when she first saw a human in a painting. This was on a visit to Zimbabwe's National Gallery. Naturalistic figure painting never suited her, and is indeed poorly suited to hash out a life of fever dreams. In dreams, objects elude us. Identities of people change. Environments morph and time is confused. The only way through is to adapt or watch or wait. In fights, you never win. It is tempting to romanticize Fava Hare's work as, quote, African, with a fetishistic eye orientalizing its allure. Yet the localized nature of her work, an African Christianity centered on maternal discourse, praying to God for protections from demonic spirits, is not the stock and trade for grungy studios in Bushwick or sanitized galleries in Chelsea. Yet here it is, and it is real.